Stay. Sit. Come here. Sit right there. Stay. Stay. What's up guys, it's Clay and Piper here with Varus Engineering. Today, what I've got planned is I'm going to be installing our full brake cooling kit here on my 2013 Subaru BRZ. What this brake cooling kit is going to do for you, it's going to maximize your brake's ability to do its job. It's gonna help decrease those rotor temperatures, which in the long run, it's also gonna help increase your pad life. It's all around great for these track days that you might be doing. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse of what comes with the kit. Um, I've got it all laid out here on my work table. So first things first, you're gonna get your backing plates um, with your carbon ducts here. It's gonna come with a hardware kit in with the ducts as well. So you're gonna get um, two pieces of foam, you're gonna get six aluminum spacers, you're gonna get six flanged M8 uh, bolts here. Um, you've got pre-cut hoses, you've got a three inch and a two and a half inch hose here. Um, you have your two pancake ducts, You've got your two fog light inlet ducts. Um, right here, what you see is our steering rack limiter kit, which is included with the brake cooling kit. Back here, we have our brackets we are going to need. For you 2017 plus owners, these are the brackets with the three prongs that you will be using. Me, on the other hand, 2012 to 2016 models will be using the one with four, and then each one will use one of these brackets as well. And then coming over, you're also gonna have four of the two and a half inch clamps and for the three inch clamps. And then you got your hardware kit here, which is gonna be an assortment of M5 hardware and then your install tool for your rivet nuts. And it also comes with four longer zip ties. So what you're gonna to need to install this kit, you're gonna need a drill with a three inch, inch drill bit, an eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12, 14, and a 17 millimeter socket. You're gonna need obviously the ratchet, uh, a set of screwdrivers, um, you're gonna need a pair of side cuts, a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench, and then you're also gonna need a four and a five millimeter hex socket. All right, so first step, um, we're going to have to remove the caliper. There's gonna be two 14 millimeter bolts here on the back side, so we're gonna remove those two 14 millimeter bolts, and then we will rest the caliper on the LCA. Now what we've got to do, you're going to want to grab your 17 millimeter socket and then we are going to remove, actually you might want to take the brake pads out first, um, but you're going to remove this, uh, this bracket right here for the caliper. All right, now we'll set these aside and we'll move to the next step. Now what we're gonna do is we need to remove the rotor. Um, depending on how long the car sat, um, if it sees rain, salt, that sort of thing, it might be harder to get off. So you have a couple options here. If it pulls off, great. If not, rubber mallet, or you can use the two bolt holes here. Now after you have the rotor removed, there's going to be three 12 millimeter bolts here that we're gonna need to remove to remove this backing plate to make room for our backing plate. All right, so now you're gonna to wanna to determine which backing plate you're after. Um, I'm on the driver's side, so this is the one that I want. And basically how these are gonna install, you're gonna use the supplied M8 hardware through there, and then you're gonna use one of these black anodized spacers on the back side, and then we'll put these on just hand tight for right now. All right, now, um, as you can see, that speed sensor wire in there is actually touching um, part of the carbon duct there on the back side. You're going to want to mark this location and then we will remove uh, the backing plate completely. And then this is where we're going to install our, uh, our foam that is supplied. We're going to wrap that around the wire just to prevent any kind of abrasion in the future. Now, if you can see that back in there, um, that is properly installed foam. That way it's in between, it's a barrier layer in between that carbon duct. You're gonna to wanna to tuck that thing up in there so there's at the least amount of movement as possible just so there's no chance of future um, harm there. Now we're gonna use our five millimeter hex and we're going to tighten these bolts. Now after we have the backing plate fully installed, the next step is going to be to reinstall our rotor.
Now, once we have the rotor reinstalled, we are going to put on two of our lug nuts. Just hand tight, it's fine. But you wanna make sure that the rotor spins freely and that it's not rubbing on um, the backing plate that you just installed. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to spin your rotor, make sure it is not rubbing on the backing plate, and then you're gonna to wanna to do this at full lock in both directions. I won't bore you with that part of the install, but you will wanna turn it all the way left and turn it all the way right and do the same thing just to verify that it's not going to rub. Now, um, if for some reason you do have any kind of rubbing at, at either full lock angle or, or in the middle, this, this backing plate is fairly malleable, so you can just kind of bend it out of the way. Um, just bend it just enough so it's not rubbing. You don't want it too far away, but you don't want it too close. Now, um, once we get the rotor on, it's time to put our uh, brake caliper bracket back on, and then we'll put our pads back in, as well as the caliper back on. Now, just for you guys that are wondering, um, when you put the bracket back on, those 17 millimeter bolts, you're gonna wanna torque those to 59 foot-pounds. And then the other, um, for the actual brake caliper, you're gonna do to about 19 foot-pounds. Now what we need to do is remove the inner fender liar here from the shock tower. Um, there's gonna be an assortment of pop rivets in here, so you can use your, your, uh, your rivet um, tool here to get those out, or a flathead. There is one here that you're gonna need a Phillips, um, so just be mindful there. All right, so we're on the driver's side. So since I have the OEM fog lights, the install's a little bit easier. If you do not at this point, this is where you're going to need to install the OEM fog light bezels. But here, as you can see, there are two screws there on the left. We need to remove those in order so we can get our brackets in there um, for the fog light ducts. Now, once you have those two um, screws out, um, we will need to unplug the pin here or the, the wire harness, and then we will electrical tape this, and then you can zip tie it away or, or just kind of tuck it away for right now. All right, so once we have the fog light out, you're gonna wanna grab um, the correct bracket. Obviously, like I said, this is a 13, so I have the one with four prongs. The 17 is gonna have the one with three prongs. You do want to use the OEM screws, so we will, uh, we will put this back into the spot where the fog light was. This duck does wanna have a, it's supposed to have a little play. It's not supposed to have a lot of play. So just be mindful of that when you're doing this part of the install. All right, so there, if you can see with the light on, now that fog light bracket is installed along with the fog light duct, and then we'll move on to the next part of the install. Now this part of the install, we are on the driver's side, like I said. Um, we do have to remove I don't know if you can see it there. We do have to remove um, the windshield washer tank. Now, we do have, there are options on the market for replacement. I believe P-Tuning makes a nice kit. Um, there are also fluid bags that a lot of people use at this point as well. But to remove this, there's a clip that looks like I already removed here, and there's a couple bolts, um, so we'll remove that. Okay, so now, um, I forgot to remove this other fender liner right here. You will want to remove that one as well. It's just a few pop clips as well. Now, right here, that hole is the one that we're going to open up with our 3 8 drill bit. Um, now, what you can do, you can use a shot back just to make sure the, the metal fillings don't go all over the place. Um, and then you can even touch it up with some touch-up paint to make sure there's no further rust or anything like that. So using your rivet nut install tool, your 9 16 wrench and a 10 millimeter, we are going to install a rivet nut, one of the supplied rivet nuts into that hole we just drilled. So there is your properly installed rivet nut. Next step, we wanna take this piece that we removed. Um, there's a slight section right here that we are gonna to need to remove so that the, the pancake duct can sit flush. I'm gonna use a razor blade and a steady hand. Um, there are other ways of doing this, but it's better to start small than it is to start big. So after the cut, um, essentially that's what you get there. And that should allow for the pancake duct to sit flush. You can obviously test fit this. Um, once we get the bracket put on here and the pancake duct, it'll be a little bit easier to tell on fitment. Now, once you get the, the black uh, engine cover fender liner put back in, whatever you want to call it, you're going to take one of your smaller brackets with your 20 millimeter button head and the small washer that's supplied for the M6. 
and then we're going to install it in the hole that we put the rivet nut in. Now we will install the pancake duct. It sits right on that bracket. So luckily that's sitting pretty flush right there. Um, this bracket will be angled a slight bit and you want to make sure the larger part of the pancake duct is facing forward and then we use one of our M5 nuts right there. And I'm just doing these hand tight and I can mess with fitment later. Um, but just to get it in place, this is what I'm going to do. So there is the pancake duct with the bracket installed. Um, these are hand tight right now, obviously. Um, that is your M5 nut holding that on there. And it looks like my, my cutting worked pretty well back there. Um, once I get this tight, we shouldn't have any issues with fitment. So on to the next step. Now this step isn't necessary by any means. Um, it just helps kind of uh, increase the longevity of your hoses. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put tape around it. I cut it into segments um, and then that will help go around the different ducts. And now you're going to take your three inch hose clamps and then you are going to put this on the fog light duct and into the pancake duct. So there is the three inch hose installed on the pancake duct as well as the fog light inlet duct. And now we'll do the same thing. We'll move on to the back side here and we'll do the two and a half inch hose. And then you're gonna want to go around the back side of the strut there and then into your um, carbon duct. All right, so the orange hose is routed. Um, like I said, you kind of go underneath there and then I zip tied it to the LCA. Um, after that, you are done. You will want to put the fender liner back on. And as you can see here, you might need to trim um, a little bit just to get it fit back into place with that pancake duct on there. Um, but the trimming should not be too terrible. Well guys, that includes the install. Uh, now I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to do the exact same thing. But that side, I'm not going to have to remove the windshield washer uh, reservoir. So it's not going to take me quite as long. Uh, but make sure to hit that subscribe button, follow us on Instagram as well as Facebook. If you had any suggestions for any newer videos coming up, if you have any suggestions for videos now, uh, what you would like to see, what you would like to see us do better, we always appreciate the feedback. So make sure you hit that down in the comment section below. And we look forward to the next video. Until next time.